Picture this, it's the year 1170, the aftermath of a bloody battle and the city of Waterford is in shambles. In the midst of all this chaos we have Richard Leclerc, known as Strongbow, casually resting his foot on a fallen Celtic cross. Behold the marriage between Strongbow and Aoife by Daniel McLeese. Imagine this as a scene straight out of a Victorian blockbuster. In the center of the action we have Strongbow putting his foot triumphantly on a fallen Celtic cross as if to say, take that Unicross. But don't be fooled by the Norman bravado. Even Strongbow knows he's just compensating for something. Meanwhile, his new bride Aoife looks down, probably wondering if she made the right choice. On the right side of the painting, we've got these Norman OGs with their fancy banners like they're trying to win some sort of medieval beauty pageant. And on the left side, there are the musicians, probably thinking, why did we agree to play for these guys? And look at the defeated Irish chiefs with metal colors and the warriors in the foreground. They may have been under-equipped and outnumbered, but they've got heart and they didn't go down without a fight. There's also an Irish musician slumped over his harp, probably taking a nap or regretting his career choices. And let's not forget the dead and wounded because that's a wedding party without some casualties, right? And don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. The flowers in the painting are apparently there to show off MacLeese's drawing and coloring skills. Because, you know, painting a bunch of flowers is super impressive. And finally, let's take a moment to appreciate the grey slab at the bottom of the painting with an Irish inscription that reads Pray for MacLeese. That's right guys. This is just a direct ripoff of George Petrie's painting, but we won't tell anyone. Now, some people say that the painting shows support for the Irish nationalist cause, while others think it's just MacLeese flexing his artistic muscle. I believe he was aware of the political implication of his work, but he was probably more interested in painting a juicy historical drama than starting a political debate. But honestly, who cares? Either way, it's a total banger of a painting. And get this, MacLeese never completed the painting in fresco and the oil painting didn't end up in Westminster Palace but in the National Gallery of Ireland. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by the sheer amount of detail in this painting, don't worry, you're not alone. I recommend staring at it until your eyes go blurry and then just calling it a day.